Welcome back to a wet and windy day in the Cardiff suburbs. The Far East though, just a few steps away. This is the first year this Japanese-style garden has opened its gates for the National Garden Scheme. Its elegant simplicity gives visitors a real taste of the Orient. Everything is manicured to perfection. You feel very quickly as if you're stepping into a different world here, don't you? Yes. Fantastic. Yes, um, as you can see, we've got the hill here and it's running down yeah. through the mountains, the river, and over the bridge, and then eventually the water then runs into the sea. Which, so it, um, the it pond is a bridge? It's, it is a bridge, yes. So it's, it's, it's a landscape in a sense? It's a landscape, then. yes, very much so. And I mean, I suppose at first glance, you might say, well, there are stones, mm. there are rocks. Mm. I get the feeling that everything here has a purpose and is meant to be exactly where it is. That's right. These stones, these stepping stones, what they call Tobiyashi, they're all set down so they look natural, that they've been there for forever, if you like. Bernard, tell me about the posts in your pond. Basically, it's where you would tie up your boat because the pond represents the sea. So this is an area where we would be close to the, to, to, to the land where you would tie your boat up. Right. And of course, the three different levels is um, the highest one represents being connected to the universe. And the, the middle one here is 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 man mm. if you like and then the, the the shorter one is is more grounded it's, it represents the earth i noticed there are certain numbers of things three posts five stones a significant numbers for what reason Bernard? with the japanese um japanese mythology japanese life in general uh three five sevens they're lucky numbers This lovely uh, maple here, this yeah. Kalmatum Inuzami, it's got seven lobes. Bernard was inspired during a trip to Japan by the gardens he visited in Kyoto. But it's taken him many years to create that same tranquility in his own garden. Initially it was just lawns. Um, a huge Leylandia up in the corner where the tea house is, um, a laburnum, um, that was basically it. A pretty average garden. Pretty average garden, yes. That tea house is quite a spectacular one. Yeah, it's yes, it's, uh, it, is, it is quite something. Yeah. Do you use it much? Um, I do, but I should use it more often. What do you actually use it for? I go in and uh, practice uh, Qigong, which is a Chinese breathing exercise, meditation. Um, my wife uses it because uh, she practices yoga, and I practice yoga myself. So, Your garden obviously reflects your sense of passion for all things Japanese. A Aikido yeah. plays quite a big part in your life. Yes, it does, yeah, for the last 40 years, teaching and training. <laughs> Aikido is a traditional martial art. Just like the Japanese garden, the focus is on energy and balance. And that really didn't discover Japanese gardens till I was in my early 30s. I picked up a book and looked and I thought, wow, there's something, there's something here that's special. What is it that particularly grabs you about a Japanese garden? It's order, um, it's beauty, and it's, I think it's timeless. Um, and it's, it's the energy you get from it. And of course, with a Japanese garden, the more you put into it, um, the more you get back from it. How do you know that you've got it right? Is it a feeling? I think it's years of planting, arranging stones, which sometimes I've been out to all day mm. and uh, Linda's come home from work and she said, what have you done? I said, well, I've moved one stone into position today because 
is getting it right. It's, it's not just, you don't just put plunk things anywhere. Everything's got its place. What I've done over the years, I've taken stuff out. Because right. initially I planned it too much and then it just didn't feel right. The energy was wrong. Mm. Um, and as they say, the saying, less is more. Um, more water house. again. Before you go in the tea house, you cleanse yourself. Well, your fingers and your lips. You're ready then to enter into what they call the world of tea. And you do that each and every time you go in? That's right. They really look a very busy, surrounded by these beautiful coloured leaves. They're fantastic, aren't they? Yes, the Asa palmatum. It, it's, a, it's a beautiful tree. And of course, one that can be grown at home, and should you wish, you can grow it in a pot as well. Left to its own devices, the tree will take on all sorts of strange shapes. But with a little bit of careful pruning, it'll push out a new branch. A little bit of careful pruning there, it'll push out another branch. And what you're looking for is this nice, flat, fan shape, which the Japanese particularly like. But there is another form of pruning as well that we do with the Asa, or at least yes. they do in Japan. Right. And what they will do is they'll take a meticulously they'll get a pair of scissors yes. they'll take all the leaves and cut them in half okay. and what happens is that the tree thinks that autumn's come early and it will actually shed all its leaves right. realize that autumn hasn't come and then we'll put all its leaves back on again but usually in a much richer color and a much smaller leaf the japanese like that Another um, interesting looking specimen here, this time with a, a stone hanging from the branch. What's the, the, the meaning here? Well, uh, continuing this Japanese style right. with, this, uh, with this pine here, what they're trying to do is get all the branches nice and flat like that. The branches don't grow like that naturally, so we need to pull them down into the right place. So what we do is we tie a piece of cord on, and then on the bottom of the cord, hang a stone that will keep this branch in the right position. And you may say, well, Goodness me, how many times do you have to tie a stone on there yeah. to make sure you've got the right position? Yeah. It's much easier than that. All you do is get yourself a, a simple spring balance like yeah. this, go to the branch that you wish to form, hook the spring balance over it, and then pull the branch down to the desired position and read the scale here, and that will tell you precisely the weight of the stone that you've got to tie on in this position. And at this as you say, it's a pine. Does this work on any type of tree? Yes, it will. One of the major differences between this garden and some of the more traditional types, I suppose, is the lack of colourful flowers, if you like. But there is this rather lovely purple and yellow flower. Tell me a bit about this. Well, in a traditional uh, Japanese garden, they'll have the plum and the cherry flowers first, which then go, and they're replaced with the iris. Well, we're back to the three, fives and sevens again, and if you look at this iris, you'll see three elements. There's the outer part of the flower, three of them, the inner part, three of them, and then these intermediates here, or the styles of the flower, there are three of them. Favoured conditions? Um, keep them watered. That's about the only thing. No trouble with that today, then. <laughs> if, if I left this garden now, it would just go wild. Um, and a lot of people say to me, is it maintenance free? And it, it, it certainly isn't. It, it's a lot of work. And it's continual. The maple trees have to be, um, no, next month, they all have to be pruned back again, leaf cutting. Um, the pines are constant, they, they're pruned twice a year. The other thing is trying to get the moss to grow, nurturing moss, and, uh, which takes years and years. What is it about the moss? Why is that so key? Oh, it's um, in Japan, uh, moss is, is worshipped because it's, it, of its calmness and uh, its slow growing. You do mm. get a tremendous sense of peace in this garden, there's mm. a, the water sounds, for example, um, it's very, very restful. Yeah, I think you could say that when you're out, it's like time stands still. Historically, this garden is actually part of the garden village scheme. Right. What would that mm. have involved and, and what would it have looked like at that time? Um, 
probably cottagey gardening, um, just lawns. There's an old Chinese um, saying that uh, your life begins when you start gardening. And is it true for you? Oh, definitely. Definitely. So we've come to the end of our travels for tonight. A truly international flavour. Yes, a shame the weather couldn't have been perhaps a bit more exotic. Well, typically Japanese, I'm told. <laughs> well, we hope you've enjoyed it despite the weather. From myself and Bill, goodbye. See you again soon. Goodbye. For more information about the National Garden Scheme, go to their website at ngs.org.uk.